What's up, guys? If you're not subscribed, please subscribe. Also, please smash that like button on the video and enjoy the show. One thing you've kept on mentioning, though, a few times that is a little off topic, but I did want to ask about it. You, you keep on shouting out like the British services mm -hmm. for, I guess, like some of their special forces techniques combined with their spy techniques. Like what, what, what makes them mention in the same breath per se with like counterterrorism as Israel? Why are they so good? Well, so I've actually had the privilege and opportunity to train with, or not train with, but operate with guys from the SAS when I was in Iraq. They were there in the same compound. So I got to know some of these guys, you know, very, um, one thing I'll tell you about those dudes, man, they had probably the funniest sense of humor of any freaking dudes mm. I've ever met. They were fucking funny guys. Anyway, they, they, what they did is they just took, you know, that game to the next level. They were the ones that really got into um, the dynamics of hostage rescue. I mean, which that's what their bread and butter is, is hostage rescue. Um, you know, they, um, for example, the selection process to get in the SAS, Delta basically took their selection process and made it their own. So you're, you know, think about that for a second. And of course, you know, the guys, the original plank owners from Delta, you know, trained a lot with the SAS guys to get like, how do you do this? How do you take down an airplane? How do you take down a train? How do you do this? So they were kind of like the the first people that really honed it. Even though the Israelis were doing it prior, the British SAS guys really sharpened that sword, so to speak. Mm. Um and they're very good at it, obviously. Um, and, uh, you know, if you want to watch a really good movie, um, you know, watch um, uh, the movie about the Princess Gate. I'm trying to remember the name of it. There's been several. One was very realistic, according to, like, interviews I saw with guys that were there that were actually on that raid. Um, but you can Google it and find it. Just You can just see um, how methodical. Oh, that's it right there. Six days. Six days. days. Yep. That's a very, very good movie. You're not going to recognize any of the actors at all, but it is, um, it's an excellent, excellent movie. I think it portrayed the regiment in a very, very good light. Um, and it was an amazing hostage rescue. I mean, it's, you know, a um, couple things went wrong, but they flowed like one dude, if I'm not mistaken, he was upselling, was rappelling down the uh, backside of the building and got knotted up. Something happened with his carabiner, and he was just basically hanging there mm. above a door that they were getting a breach or a window or something. And anyway, just like stuff like that. That's where those units make their money. Because anywhere else, that's like, uh-oh, and everything comes to a screeching halt. <clears throat> right? Not there. Not at that level. It's just critical thinking skills come in. What do we do? I think they cut the guy down something very quickly and another guy got caught on fire going through the a window or some shit like a I think a curtain or something fell on him and anyway just dude kept flowing and everybody talks about and we can get into training stuff here real second but like everybody talks about you know this the the tenets of CQB speed surprise violence of action mm. well actually there's a fourth tenet that nobody wants to talk about and that's momentum you have to keep the momentum you can't just get bogged down in a hallway or in a room or, you know, whatever. You have to keep moving. You it, When you become stagnant in that environment, bad shit happens. So, like, when I've taught it and I talk about, you know, the tenets of CQB, yeah, it is speed, surprise, violence of action. But I also add in momentum. And I think it's very applicable to – and I didn't come up with that. Just an FYI. It's not my thing. I've heard other people talk about it, people that I respected. I'm like, you know what? That fucking makes sense because that's absolutely what I experienced. Like you cannot like come to a screeching halt in a hallway or especially in a hostage rescue type situation, like where you have to get to the, <laughs> to the hostages quickly. You can't be fiddle farting around in a hallway and like you got to get there immediately. And how do you pick up that momentum? Well, that's what flashbangs and, you know, mm -hmm. distraction devices are for. And anyway, not getting into all the tactics, but anyway, um, but yeah, like, but a lot of people don't talk about it and it's really strange because, and I talk about really experienced guys and to me, I ain't the most experienced guy in the world, but to me, it makes sense. 
yeah, speed, absolutely surprise, yes, violence of action, yes. And a lot of people even get that third one wrong, like what is violence of action? And it's actually, to me, a mindset. It is an overwhelming mindset that I am better trained than you, I'm physically stronger than you, I, I'm better, 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 better. And that just gives me that ability to deliver like violence of action on the target, like wham, like there's no hesitation. There's no doubt. When I come through this door, you're going to lose period like that to me. And some people may disagree with me, but to me, that's what it means. Cause that's what I felt when they talked about it. Like violence of action was a mindset with me. And did I actually have that day one? No, I did not. Didn't have it, you know, had a little bit, but as I got better and better in, you know, work with guys that exemplified that. I'm like, ah, the kind of light bulb went off. Like, I get it now. Mm. Like, you know, you're fucked. <laughs> like, I, like when these people come for you, you have no, you have no chance. And that's what it is. Like, you literally don't have a snowball's chance in hell of surviving. And that's to me, that's what violence of action is. Like. You know, it's just a, it's a mindset. It's very powerful, dude. It's very powerful. When when Remy was in here, and I remember you had some similar sentiments too, but he put it like exact on the point. He was talking about how at the highest levels, like in the Navy SEALs, if if they've been able to identify like one core gene that makes someone, oh, this person is going to be in and they're going to make it and they're going to be the guy they want. He said, no. They haven't. There, no. There's just – there's some intangibles that can only be seen once they're put – That's right. In the spotlight for That's something. Right. Not necessarily on the battlefield yet, but, you know, some of the stuff – like what you laid out last time, some of the stuff you even get put through. There's just – there's there's a thing. You can't say what it is, but it's yeah. not – it's not tangible. And, you, dude, let me tell you, you can't just look at somebody and right. go, that guy's a stud. Right. That, let me tell you, those guys are usually the first ones that quit. Yep. In in my experience, you know, That's then you look too. at this, oh, really? Yep. And then yep. you look at this guy like, dude. Mm -hmm. And then guess who's standard graduation? Yeah. He said there was one guy, I think this was Remy who said this. He said there was one guy who was like hardcore, crazy triathlete, someone that they had been asking to come do buds for a long time. Sure. And he finally agreed to do it. And everyone thought, you know, of course. He's, he's going to smoke first. He was gone. He was yeah, gone. Yeah, of course. Yeah, dude, that's the whole, this is, again, this is what I coach people. It's great to be physically strong, which you have to be, to be in a special operations, being in special forces or SEALs or whatever. You have to be physically strong. Give me a break, dude. But without that mental toughness, yeah. it's like having a Ferrari body with a Volkswagen engine in it. Mm, it just yeah. ain't gonna work. Yep. And when you start heaping, especially a program like Bud's, you know, Bud's is an, an amazing, I've never been to it, but it's an amazing selection course to get to the SEAL teams. And it's very, very well thought out. And it is, its sole function is, uh, I'm sure like the first phase of it during Hell Week, it's just to weed out the guys that may be mentally or physically strong enough to do it, but they just don't have it mentally. They mm. They just don't. And I'm sure you could ask anybody, Sean, or any of these guys that have been in the SEAL teams, just like SFAS selection. It's a physically demanding wear your ass down day after day after day where it gets to a point where, yeah, you're a physical stud, but you're past that now. You got blisters on your feet that are this big. I lost all my freaking toenails. I had a stress fracture. I mean, that physical fitness is not going to get you through that. Mm -hmm. It's just not. Your mind is going to get you through that. You've got to take yourself to a place where you just kind of – the pain is still there, but it's dulled. I don't know how to explain it. No, you're explaining you know I mean? it beautifully. Yeah, it's dulled. It's like, yeah, this fucking sucks, but it's dulled. Or you're concentrating on somebody else, like, and that's why they're so big on team stuff. Like, I would concentrate on another guy that maybe was having a trouble and focus on him. Hey, dude, let me help you out. And you're not worrying about your pain right now. I'm worried about him. Mm. That helps. Does it make it go away? No. Does it dull it? Yeah, it sure does. Yeah, it sure does. To a manageable point where you're like, I can deal with this for another day. Mm. And then you get to the next day. I can make it to dinner. You know what I mean? That's, how you, that's, how, you make it, that's how you make it through courses so like that. So you're gamifying it in a way. 
Kind of, but you're not looking at like graduation. Like I looked at SFAS, like the guys like, dude, just make it to dinner every night. Just say, I'm going to show up to dinner. I'm showing up to dinner every night. That's it. Okay. You can't be thinking a week or two weeks or three. Like right. you just, dude, you can't. If you do, I think that's dangerous. You know, I think you're, you're biting off more. You can chew, but just, I'm going to make it to dinner. You make the dinner like, oh, cool. I made it. I can make it one more day, mm -hmm. one more day. And that's how you get through courses. And dude, I'll be the first one to tell you, I was not prepared for SFAS. I showed up with brand new boots. As a matter of fact, I remember when I dumped my shit out, the, the one uh, instructor was like, don't even unpack. He looked at me and said, don't even unpack. <laughs> yeah. And so I suffered, you know, uh, a lot of guys, are, there's guys that, dude, there are guys that make it through selection courses like SFAS and Ranger School and Buds that come out the other side kind of like, yeah, that sucked, but they just were prepared mentally, physically, emotionally. And I'm sure you could ask guys besides myself, they're like, yeah, there were a few guys like that that just, meh, you know, I wasn't one of them, you know, I suffered. I wasn't prepared. I didn't take the time to break my boots in. I didn't do enough ruck marching. Um, you know what, though? In, in, in getting to know you over the past year, you're one of these guys that there's something in you that and, – and we see this in a, in a lot of guys who do high-level military stuff. It's not just that you crave the action. You also – crave the challenge needing to get even bigger as you go like you crave the the difficulty of things it's almost like that's that conquering gene that we all are born with because we're animals right there's something right. deep inside of us that makes us need to feel like we we got to the top of something and you're always chasing that through for a long time it was adventure vis-a-vis -vis serving your country but it's never really stopped. I mean, you do it now with your teaching in a lot of ways, constantly right. trying to push the boundaries depending on who the clientele is of, right. of, of what you can do. Thank you for watching the video, guys. Please hit that subscribe button and check out this clip's full podcast episode by clicking here or in the description below.